Can you see, I mean, you're looking at a, a supply line within a facility. Yeah. And, you know, and, and what happens? Because I got to tell you, man, uh, the nurses, they're like the MacGyvers of the, of the medical world. Yes. They can fix almost anything, you know. Um, they, they really can, especially when it comes to the human body. Um, and, and they are dumped on by the doctors. They're yep. dumped on by administration. They're, they're, they're so underpaid and, and under um, appreciated. But anyways, um, so you have managers that are to oversee uh, even their own costs in their, in their unit. So they're saying, you know, well, you, you never have me stocked with, I'm going to go to something super simple like flushes, okay? You never have me stocked with flushes. I always have to go up to the third floor. I always have to go over to West. I always have to go to, where, to get more flushes because you never have enough. Yes. Yeah. So the person says, well, um, you know, the, the, the problem with that is that I, I'm, I'm always sending people to, to you, right? And, and so that, that's where the conversation ends, because now both of them have their walls up. Where we come in and we can say, all right, yes, we have this person who is doing the milk run that every two hours they go in and they, and they restock your med room, they restock your Pixis. Um, and we, do, we give you the same as everyone else. We don't know why you're running out. Well, but they've never communicated. And so... Here, here's what, here's a real life, what really happened. That exact conversation took place and the nurse manager never once, cause she didn't think she had to tell a supply person that where the average unit has 18 beds, she had 24 beds and where the, at where the, the nurse manager didn't tell the supply people that what she was doing was a uh, uh, post chemo. So the, the flush orders were not Q12 every 12 hours, but they were Q4, which meant now she's using three times as much and she has almost 50% more beds. Yeah. So that's why. So now we can say, well, wait a minute. If that's the case, instead of sending the person by every two hours, we can send them by during this run, or we can have two people swing by there, or we can switch out because now you don't need to have this many from the NICU, the, the little 10 mils. All you're using basically are 30 mils. Let's get rid of the whole, the whole NICU bin mm -hmm. that, you, that you're not using, and we can bring you twice as much. Exactly. You know, but now we have the data to go in and say, yep, you are coming. This is what you're bringing, but this is what the need is now. How do we solve it? And it takes that, you know, four-year argument down to, Oh, well, this is simple. It's sol solved in a minute and a half. Exactly. And, and they're all basically using this, you know, similar or even the exact same system they're using now, but just integrating that data together. And, you know, like we do with whether it's, uh, you know, food and beverage or uh, what, whatever the, the industry or vertical is, making that data actionable on each other. So creating an order for bringing in those flushes, uh, you, know, you know, that's not, this is not my expertise. That's what we have you, Dean. And, you know, that's why you're, you're, you know, obviously our medical solutions expert and we come to you for these specific, you know, uh, use cases. And that's why it's you know, amazing talking this through with you. And, you know, right away, it clicks off in my mind, all the, the data that's there and how it's so simple and should be working with each other within the integrated middleware, right? So, um, you know, bringing that data together, and, you know, we, we even extrapolate that further, right? Like, we're, 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 you're talking about intra-hospital, obviously, right? Or intra-hospital. Mm -hmm. If we're taking it even further, and taking the entire network that we're talking about state, national, and having all these systems speak together. And so the supply and demand is based on what's needed. If there's a catastrophe that happens in, you know, a, a tornado that happens, uh, you know, in the Midwest or, or a, a hurricane that happens in Florida, whatever happens, that we have a system that's agile and can be adjusted based on need, as opposed to these manual systems right now with these, you know, static data silos, where right now it's, people are dying and they're making phone calls and sending messages and saying, how do we get the shipment off? Well, we need more of these supplies to wear with, with spa within the hospital. It's, it's all disconnected all the way down the line, all the way down the line. So right from supply and then right down to the patient, right to getting it to the patient level mm -hmm. and every single step in between. And that, that's where we come into play and sort of like marry all that together uh, with similar systems that we've already implemented for other companies as well. So that, that's where I see it being such a, a perfect use case. Uh, the more I speak to you about it, the more we talk about it, the data that's available and what's going on. So I, I think it's fantastic. Well, and then if, if you take that in and let's, let's chop that up a few, a few more slices here mm -hmm. and, you know, 
very rarely do you have a standalone hospital. Usually a hospital is part of a chain. Some of them are small chains in rural America, which is, you know, three to five hospitals. And then mm -hmm. you have some of the mega chains like, like HCA and Advent Health. Um, but within the chain, now we can look at, and, and through AI, we can say, hey, this hospital is doing this. They haven't had a problem. You're having problems, but you're not doing this. What's the difference? And now that we can track human beings, now that we can track how, how early they're actually ordering the supplies, mm -hmm. um, you know, are, are, they, are they following under the just-in-time principle or are they following a par principle? Um, and are they doing that uh, on, the, on the entire facility or are they doing it within a unit? You see, and, and so now we can, we can have the, the comparative numbers, the data, so that every single unit within a facility, every single facility within a chain is now meeting those expectations of peak efficiency. Then you start bringing into, again, back to AI, where it's like, all right, Florida, hurricane season starting. So we look at the lag time of, and I'm just gonna stay with the scenario of flushes because we did actually have a shortage of those about four years ago. But um, you look at that and the, the lag time on that is six weeks. So that alert tells you six weeks before hurricane season, hey, hurricane season's coming on this date. Um, you may want to because the lag time is this. So. You know, um, I, I made, I, I've made a very good living for the last five, six years as being a healthcare consultant. However, I'm not a big fan of, of any type of consulting. Um, I, I think it's a big waste of, of assets, um, of, of money uh, from uh, any, any business, any corporation. But I do see when you go in and you remind people of some of the basics of their MBA or their education that they haven't done in 20 years, they forgot about, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I see it. And you end up inadvertently saving the company, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, even that much in a month. Well, then I see the value. But for the most part, I see a lot of consultants that are basically talking heads. Um, and, and I'm not a big fan. What I love about this system is that you have that built in consultancy through. Um, AI, artificial intelligence, that's constant reminders. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. So all the, all the principles that we've learned and we're constantly updating the new education, you know, back in, back in uh, 1900 uh, or, or shortly thereafter, Ford had lean processing. And we basically forgot about that until the 18 or the 1980s when all of a sudden Six Sigma came out, right? Um, so, so it got a little sloppy there for a while. But with this AI, it never gets sloppy. It's constant. There's no more need for renting units. There's no more need for consultancy because it's already built in. And, and that's something else that I absolutely love about this system. Yeah, me as well. I, I also feel that the, the real-time information that you're getting throughout the entire system where it's updating, whether it's you know, the maintenance of the actual DMEs, whether it's you know, the patient onboarding system, you know, what's happening within the hospital itself that's using these you know, past you know, uh, data logs that we have through machine learning to make the supply and demand meet the need, right? So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it really is very amazing. Uh, and you know, honestly, uh, I feel like we, you know, the traction that we're looking to get, um, I think, you know, we're reaching out to the proper parties. I don't know if you want to, you know, if you want to comment, you know, where we are right now, um, you know, what, whether it's in within Florida, you know, nationally, where would you see our best way to tackle uh, getting, you know, a system that's so, I guess you can say. Uh, so in depth when it comes to so many different levels of integration, um, it's, it's difficult to attack it from, uh, you know, from one, one, uh, one aspect or one part of the hospital when you want it to be a full encompassing system, right? So uh, how would you think the best way to tackle it from here on out and, and our efforts so far, how would you think they're going? Well, I, I think our efforts are good. You know, when, whenever you're looking at uh, change, you're going to get a lot of resistance. Um, and then, you know, uh, this is actually the solution to the supply problem of the uh, corona or, or the COVID-19 pandemic. This is the solution to it. But trying to get someone to uh, listen at this time, it, it's, it's really hard. And, and yes, we've talked to uh, everyone from our, our local congressmen and senators um, all the way up to FEMA uh, here in the States. Um, I've even got 
uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the guy, the, the my pillow guy, Mike Lindell, um, who who talked with the president, um, he has a uh, on his personal web page. He has a thing called My Store, where if you if you're an inventor, um, you can submit that. And then um, he also has a subcategory of that. If you have a solution for COVID nineteen, mm-hmm. you can submit that. Well, that's been submitted, and we've we've got response back. And right now, they're they're looking at this as something that 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 yeah, this is definitely a solution. Mm-hmm. Um, and that what I like about uh, Mike Lindell and his team is that um, they don't really care to make money if it's a solution for the country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and so that's great. But he he did at one time have the president's ear, and and all it takes honestly for us is the right person to see the vision, to say, why are we this this program, this this platform, this middleware platform mm-hmm. uh, is so user friendly um, on, at every level, uh, and, and it plays well with everybody who's in the business, be it IBM, be it SAS, be it whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, that it, it's it's going to be the huge change uh, in driving down the cost of healthcare. We just really have to make sure that the right person gets it. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now, with the we go from from COVID nineteen uh, in the states here, and now we've got rioting going on. It's just no one has time to even breathe, more or less. Take a look at at, at what what we're proposing here. But yeah. as far as you know, going back to your question, are we going down the the right route? Oh, absolutely, because um, you know, this started from a simple solution of how do we cut the cost of rentals to hospital, mm-hmm. and from there it, it went it, it went so far beyond to a, a national global solution. Uh, once you know, for, from my ideas, from my consulting, teamed up with Morpheus Network, it just it, it was the total package at that point. So I, I think we're doing it correctly. Um, you know, reaching out to, to the right people, we just need some time for them to hear it. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. No, I agree. And it's, you know, it's, it's interesting how we're, we're tackling it from different levels, like you said, you know, from the ground level all the way up to, you know, even the connecting to the White House as well. That's, you know, potentially close. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's the fantastic. The original idea mm-hmm. of this was to streamline just the DME rental and, and yep. just save a facility from there. That was the only, that was where it started. And then from there, that. I have that, that screen on my page. Yeah, yeah. We do, and then and then from there, that became so um, in, important, and it became so. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Apparent that this was a very easy solution, and that was integrating the EMR, the uh, electronic medical records, uh, into the DME solution, durable medical equipment solution, yep. um, and then allowing taking out the human element. So. So where this saves money, and this just makes common sense once you break it down, is you no longer have human beings, which is for most for most facilities, their second largest, if not the, the largest part of their capital budget, takes them out of the equation. So that saves. So, so when I go in and I talk to um, healthcare facilities and I'm consulting with them and I say, listen, I, I, I can save you guys right now. I, I, I've walked in the door and I've seen just a handful of transfers. Um, I already know right now that I can save you guys about $120,000 every single month. I know right now I can lower your um, uh, your 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 C diff, um, your hospital acquired uh, infections by at, at least 20%. Uh, and and let me get, take a few more steps in the door. And they don't believe me. And then I walk through what I saw from a from fresh eyes from a different perspective, and they're like. Wow, well, we didn't realize this. So, so the the DME solution became obvious, and then from there, because that only took honestly a couple of months to develop. But from there, let's see if we can take it the next the next step. And so that's when we started looking at. Well, the DME solution was real simple because we looked at it. We we simply reverse engineered it from the from the patient out to the manufacturer all the way out, and and yeah. that became very very painfully obvious. Well, if we do this with all supplies, is that possible? Mm -hmm. And when we start looking at it, it's absolutely. Because again, the information to streamline, to lean something out, um, all comes from data. So we're able to collect the data, store data. And and here's the beautiful thing about about this. The, The longer we're in it, the more data we have, 
the more precise we have. And I know, Dan, you talked about our, um, um, our, our what was it? Oh, the real time. You talked about real time. And I love that because that's true. Mm -hmm. But what I like even more than real time is our predictive capabilities. I like that there we can that. take mm -hmm. the, the information from a pandemic and we can say, all right, well, the pandemic ground zero is New York. Their population is, our Florida's population is, we can adjust those numbers and say, if ground zero is Tampa versus New York City or ground zero is Orlando or Miami or Jacksonville versus New York City, we can take those same numbers and apply them. What are the supply needs? What are they gonna be based on our population, based on our, our facility sizes? And all of that is just a built-in um, algorithm. That's all that is. Exactly. But we can take these numbers and just transfer, boom, boom, boom. And then, and this and this is where, where Morpheus Network has just, it, it went beyond my, my capabilities. Um, Morpheus Network has, has the button you can push to say, all right, here's every day, here's maximum capacity, here's our lowest capacity, here's a pandemic, here's, here's a hurricane. Let's go back to hurricane in Florida. We are the eye of the storm, or we're ans ancillary just outside of it, just outside of its path, or we're regional. It has how it's going to affect us and what supplies we're going to need for that. Yeah, now, we're, we're actually saying the exact same thing. What, what, I, you know, what I'm saying about the predictive abilities, uh, using the real-time data, so you know, like you're saying, you know, based on a pandemic, based on this, based on that, those triggers, you know, saying, okay, this is actually pandemic levels of people coming to the hospital because an earthquake happened or this happened, something they didn't even see happening because how can you predict that? Then the numbers will push the system ahead based on the real time data and the predictive abilities of the past for the, for the present, right? So uh, right. Re really, really cool. So it's, it's almost like using that real time data to trigger ahead the predictive abilities of the system, which I, I love as well. I, I think that is the coolest, you know, to take in all that data together and make it work together in order to get those supplies where they need to be. Uh, right. and we've you know, seen success with that with other industries. And it just, like you said, you know, within the healthcare industry, it just makes so much sense because there's so much disconnectedness. And we've already you know, proven value and been validated with, you know, with other companies and other industries. And it's, it's just needed so, you know, so badly, so critical in, in healthcare.